Welcome, I'm Neil from Santos. In this video, we will explore the inner workings of the Java hash map. By the end of this tutorial, you will understand how hash maps store and retrieve data efficiently. So let's start with the basics. What is a hash map? A hash map is part of Java's collections framework and provides a way to store key value pairs. For example, you can use a hash map to store student names to student traits. For example, we have John had an A, Paul had a B, Ringo had a C. So this data structure would allow us to associate these grades to these names and also uh, making it easy to look up the student grades by their names. So given this conceptual organization of grades to names, how is that actually stored on a hash map? What is the basic structure of the hash map? So internally, a hash map uses an array of buckets so we've got here an array, and the arrays in Java are zero index. So the first entry is zero. Then you have one, two, and it goes all the way to 15. So on a hash map, the default size of an array is 16. So the first entry is zero, and the last is 15. Each entry right here, each of these entries, is called a bucket, okay? Therefore, this array is called an array of buckets, okay? So then how is how would this data be stored in this array of buckets, which is the basic structure of a Java's hash map? So each entry here has a linked list, okay? So, for example, let's assume that this would hold the entry John, okay? And let's assume that this entry here, the slot or bucket 1, would hold the entry Paul, and this entry here would hold the entry Ringo. So, now that we have a basic understanding of the hash map data structure, right, which uses this array of buckets, Again, each slot is called a bucket. And by default, we have an array of size 16. And then the actual entries are stored on a linked list. Let's see how each entry was actually stored on each of these slots. For example, the John entry got on the bucket zero, all right? So here we have our map. The key of the map we know is a name. So it is a string. That's the type of the key. And let's assume that the value, this could be a character, but for simplification, let's assume that it's also a string. Okay. So let's just, for simplicity, let's call this M. That's our map. And we are creating to a hash map. Okay. So. What happens when we do M put and we add the key, John, which is a string, and the grade, A, okay? So we've done that put for Paul and for Ring, okay? With their respective grades. So when we call these, we end up with this entry on this linked list on the bucket zero. How did that happen? The way a hash map finds the slot is by getting the key and passing it through a hash function. So every key that we are trying to insert in the map will pass to a hash function. Now, what does hash function does? The hash function has two inputs, okay? It has the size of the... Uh, array of buckets and it obviously has the key so what does it do with those two values so an example of a hash function that takes the size of the array of buckets and the key would be the following function right 
first. It would calculate the, basically it would convert the key. So the first step would be to get the key, right? Which in our case, we know is a string, okay? And convert it to a number, an integer, okay? And then the second step would be to get this integer, okay? And make sure that this integer is a valid index on our array of buckets, okay? So one simple way to do that is to simply get this integer and do a module operation with the size of the array of buckets, right? Let's see how the simple hash function would work, for example, on the entry John A, when you call map put. So we start with the key, which is John, which is a string. How would go from a string to an integer? What we would do is, given that John's type is a string, we just call John hash code. Okay, so the hash code is a object method that returns an int. Every object in Java has a hash code method that returns an int. So because the key that we store in our map is of type string, and obviously string extends object, and string has a hash code. And we would call hash code on dot. And let's assume that this hash code returns the value 16. Then the second step of our simple hash function would be to get this value 16 and index it onto our real buckets. So remember that the key John got into the first slot. So if we do 16 module, by the way, the percentage in Java means module of 16, this gives us zero. So the module is the remainder of the whole division of this number by this number, okay? So this is how we got the zero entry. So now let's go over all the other values and see what this will give us. So we have our hash function here. Let's create our table. So we have our input and our output, okay? So the input is join and the output is zero. Paul, let's assume that Paul's hash code Okay, it is 70. 17 divided by 16 is 1 with a remainder of 1. So the return would be 1. And notice that now we have Paul's entry stored at the bucket 1. And last but not least, we have Ringo and assume that Ringo's hash function is true. And the assumption would be that Ringo's hash code 18 divided by 16 would be 1 with remainder, okay? After we find the slot on the array of buckets, we would then create an entry. This is called an entry. It's a map.entry object, okay? That's going to wrap the actual two values, the key and the value that we are adding to the map. So we would have the key John, the value a and we have a pointer to the next value okay so that's how each entry would be stored after we find the key to the array of buckets so now what happens if we were to add an entry here joe okay which got a d okay not the most studious or clever guy and joe end up landing here, right? So let's see how would we end up in this situation. So this, when this happens, when we have more than one entry for the same bucket or slot, collision, okay? So every time on a hash map where the linked list has more than one entry, then that means that we have a collision a collision just means that we have more than one entry using the same slot. That is the hash function for John and Joe, the same value, okay? So let's see how we could end up in this situation. If we go back to our hash function, okay? 
remember that we had in an input and output. So we had John yield zero. And what we are assuming here is Joe also will yield zero. Okay. So how is a map hash map able to store more than one entry in the same slot? This process is called chaining. Okay. And it uses another method of the objects class called equals. So the object class has, as we saw before, the hash code, which is crucial to index onto the bucket, okay, which is part of the hash function. And now we are going to see how the equals method of the object class is used to handle collisions or chaining. Okay, so let's look at this entry. So we have our entry here, zero, and we said that we have John, which has an add an A, okay? So now here comes a new entry or value, I should say. We have the value Joe, grade D. So this is the value, okay? So again, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna calculate using Joe's key. So we got the key is Joe. We're gonna pass through the hash function. That's going to give us zero. Okay. And now the map says, the hash map says, oh, there is already an entry on this linked list. So what the hash map is going to do is going to use chain to handle this collision. What chain is going to be doing is going to be calling equals on the key. And it's going to be looking for an entry whose keys equals is the same. If it finds it, it's going to replace the value. If it doesn't, then it's gonna add a, the new entry. So it's gonna ask, is John equal to Joe? Okay, and the answer is false. So then it's gonna go to the next one. There is nothing, it's null. So it's gonna create another, a new entry. It's gonna add populated with Joe and the grade, and it's gonna link the previous one to this one, okay? So this is why Every entry or every, this is why every key on a hash map needs to implement the equals and hash code, okay? So the hash code is part of the hash function that converts the key value to an index on the array of buckets, okay? The equals method is used as part of chain to resolve collisions when you have different keys indexing onto the same slot, okay? Notice that the equals method is also used to retrieve an entry. For example, let's suppose that I have after storing Joe, so remember our variable is called M, I called put Joe and the grade was D. Let's say that now I want to print this value. So I'm gonna call M get Joe, okay? And this is going to return D. How will the map find out this Joe's entry? That is an entry whose key equals to Joe. It's gonna do again the same thing. It's gonna do a hashing is going to apply the hash function on Joe, which is going to give a zero by using the key. Okay, so it's going to end up here in this slot. And then it's going to use the uh, keys value hash code to find the entry. So it's going to start here. Okay, it's going to point her here and it's going to ask, is this entry key value equals to Joe? It's going to be calling the equals on the key. No, then it's gonna go to the next one, okay? And then it's gonna ask, is this key, is this entry keys value equals to Joe? Yes, so we found our entry, and what the map is gonna do is gonna return the value of these entries, okay? So if we go back to this array of buckets, right, you will see how important the hash function is, right, to achieve a good distribution of the these entries 
across the array of buckets, right? So it is better to have these entries, each entry in the map, it's better to be on its own slot. Why? Because you could just index the slot, which is a constant operation. We don't have to be iterating over, which is a linear operation. Okay. So if I write this thing, so last thing that I want to talk about before ending this video is a load factor. Let's talk about the load factor. So when you create a hash map, the load factor is by default 0 0.75. Okay. This is 75% or three quarters of the size. Now what how does the hash map uses this? The hash map uses this to determine when to resize these array of buckets, okay? Because the original size or the default size of a map is 16, right? So if you just do a new hash map without any parameters, then you're gonna get a load factor of 75% and a size, the size of the array of buckets of 16. So three quarters of 16 is 12. So when the actual size of the map, okay, equals 12, which is three quarters of 16, then this equals to the load factor. So the hash map will resize. Resize just means we're gonna go to, from our size of 16 to 32. So we're going to double our array. Okay. This is our rail buckets. It's going to be doubled in size. Okay. And obviously every single hashing that was computed, right? It's going to have to be recomputed because now we have, we're going from 16 to 32, right? So all of the entries going to have, the keys is going to have to be rehashed onto this. All right. So in this video, we've explored internal workings of the Java hash map class, including how it stores and retrieves data, how a hash map handles collisions and rehashes entries when it resizes. Understanding this concept can help you write more efficient code. Be sure to check out our other tutorials for more in-depth programming insights. I am Nilton and thanks for Watch your, watch your, watch your.